if the Muslims took over the world, they would make it very clear they would institute Sharia law all over the world. So then if the Jews were able to take over the world, should they institute uh, halakha? And it's a great topic. So I got home, as I said, very late because I was tired. I was traveling. I went out to Los Angeles. And um, so I'm in there looking through Google, trying to decide what to say tonight. I think I fell asleep. Right in the middle of it, I fell asleep. And I started a dream. I had this great dream. And like most of my dreams, it was in black and white. There it was in black and white. All of a sudden, I'm sitting in my house. A twister comes up, takes my house, slams it down into this other layer. Yeah, I get out, technicolor. Everything's in technicolor. All these midgets are running around, so I'm thinking, and you know, I was out, and I told you about the little place I was out in the <clears> California, <throat> that little club. Did you match them with the midget fossils? Well, the, uh, I, I was going to do that. I'm thinking, <laughs> well, maybe I'm back in L.A. I'm running around with all these midgets. The difference with a lot of these midgets had little black beards and hats on, but it was a little different. So I run out to the first midget I see, and I said, you know, am I in the land of Oz? He says, no, that's down the road. You're in the land of Oiz. The land yeah. of Oiz. I said, oh, no. I'm in a world run by Jews. This world was run by Jews. I was so excited. Finally. Thinking of our topic, how, how pertinent this, this is going to be, a land where the Jews run the world. Everything must be Sharia law. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. I'm sorry. Halakha. Everything has to be Halakha. I figured finally now there's righteousness. Everything is good. Uh, so I find out a little bit about the world I'm in. They said, listen, the Jews run everything. They run the sporting teams. They, so now I, and, and all the sporting teams are now owned by the Jews. The people that represent all the, the, the athletes are Jews. I find out the communication system. Jews, the newspapers, everything's just on figure. So no more of this horrible left-wing stuff. Everything's going to be good. There's no more of these stories about, you know, where there's ambiguous of what's good, what's bad. Better than that. I know you're not going to believe this. But the entire entertainment system in this land of always, Jews, everything. The movies, the, the video games. So just like in the other shows we're talking about, there's going to be no more violence and horrible sex in the movies and no more is there a God, is there a not God. You know, it, it, it's all going to be good. Everything's better than that. So I'm going down this yellow big road. There's another road right next to me. This is, is Wall Street, right down there. In this land, Jews. Finally, the business world is going to be 100% ethical. Mm -hmm. Jews run the whole thing. So, right. so By law. By, by law. So, so I'm thinking this, finally, we are in a place where everything's... In, Good. Now, it wasn't all good. There was this uh, couple bad scenes. There was like a, a wicked witch. I know you're thinking probably up in this big evil castle. But it wasn't. It was weird. The wicked witch was in this nice, beautiful white house. I don't know. He didn't like the Jews either. But mm -hmm. so, I, don't, I digress. I don't want to get off on that subject. So I'm thinking, finally, you know, we're going to find out what it's like when Jews run the whole world. Halakha. Mm -hmm. And I woke up. Horrible. I woke up and there I was. And oh, horrible again. Our Wall Street. I'm going, the news was on our Wall Street, you know, the one that was run by the, you know, the, not like the one we ran in here, the, the, the Goldmans and Sachs and Shearsons and Lehmans and our Hollywood, they were Spielbergs. Yeah, and, right. So I'm upset, you know, I went back to our world, but I think there could be a perfect place where if we ran the world, if the Jews ran the world, halakha for everybody. Yeah. Righteousness. That's right. When you pulled into McDonald's, McDovid's, McDovid's you right? pulled in McDovid's and you ordered a hamburger, no cheeseburger, right. they'd say to you, like, you know, or you ordered a milkshake, they'd say, when's the last time you had meat? We don't well, serve to anyone that has had meat within the last six hours. I'm glad you brought that up, because where I was, right well, I did a little DNA test to have a breathalyzer to see if you had milk on your bread. They stopped you. <laughs> By the way, they didn't have, where I was, they didn't have any red lobster, because there was a red cafilta fish. So right. I figured, um, you know, you're right. That's the kind of world. Everything would be perfect. That's right. So isn't that what happened? Isn't that what should happen if the Jews one day run the world? Right. 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 Yeah. Would it happen like that? You, you think know? it would. So let's take a step back and wonder what, and, and then, by the way, in the Israel, there are actually people that are afraid that it is going to happen uh, like that. I bet. Because, you know, in Israel, it's kind of a joke here in America, at least it seems to us, because the Jews are such a small percentage of the population, although they control everything, supposedly. Right. But um, in Israel, the Jews aren't. The Orthodox Jews are not a small percentage of the population. And... The other people in the country, aside from the Arabs, are Jewish. So, you know, how do we feel vis-a-vis -vis other Jews? Right. But we're getting way ahead of ourselves. Let's roll it back. Okay. Let's talk about Sharia, first of all. All right. Because that's what we want to, you know, play off of. Because this is where gen the idea generated. Who would ever think there'd be a religious takeover in the country? But if you find out about jihad, jihad is a really interesting thing. You know, everyone says jihad is like, you know, holy war and all that type of stuff, right. and you, you picture the curved sword and they're killing everybody, and right. you know either the you know off of his head unless he observes it and all that. But jihad is really just the idea 
regardless of the methods used, it is to bring about the state of events that the world lives according to Sharia, Quran, Muslim law. Right. Okay? And there are certain things you have to do and certain things you, you are not allowed to do. Okay? No alcohol, everyone's got fast during Ramadan, no pork, all this type of stuff, you know, don't get into it. They do have laws about charging interest, they got lots of laws. And it so parallels, in many ways, the halachic system. Right. We don't eat pork, they don't eat pork. You know, we have fast days, they have fast days. A lot of things. And <clears throat> if you look at them, you see that they even study. They have schools where they study very devotedly and they argue out the law and the details and things like that. Very similar. It's very similar. Yeah. And their goal is to get the whole world observing this because it's good. If it's good enough for me, it's good enough for you. That's true. If I believe in it, you got to believe in it. And, that's, and we're supposed sense. to spread it. And Muhammad said they're supposed to spread it. They're supposed to go wherever they can. And any law, land that they live in, their duty is to bring that land under the domain of Sharia law, which is only the best thing for that land. Which would make sense for the people. Right. Now, so what about the Jews? Right. Shouldn't we have the same purpose? Or right. The same thing. Now, you'll notice, interestingly enough, that Jews have lived all over the place. We never imposed any of these laws anywhere. <clears throat> but you could always say, well, the Jews are just too small. They couldn't get away with it. But if they would get big in numbers, like, let's say, the Muslims, and, you know, France, some of these countries where they're, you know, the population is just exploding. Right. The Muslim population. And they do try to impose it. And as a matter of fact... They don't necessarily impose it by the sword. They can impose it at the ballot box also. Right, right, they could. They believe in it. They believe in democracy. For example, in Egypt right now, Muslim Brotherhood. Yeah, which, yeah, they they believe in democracy. Ish. Nothing wrong with <laughs> why, why kill people? If you can vote, let's vote. If, if that's open now, if we can have the vote and we elect enough religious people, we elect, then we win. That's what the people want. We impose law. It's great. Why should people have to be killed? They don't specifically want to kill people to impose Sharia law. They just want Sharia law to be the law. Right. So they'll right. do it politically or whatever. So you could say, well, the Jews only don't do that because they've never been strong enough. But if they would, they would try to pull it off. Right. Well, as a matter of fact, there are a couple of places. There's a little town called the town of New Square. It's near... Muncie, New York, Rockland County. Don't know of it. Little teeny town. And it's all made up of very Hasidic Jews. And when you drive in, there's a little thing that says, you know, anyone entering the city is requested to dress in accordance with uh, laws of modesty. And on the bottom it says, city code number da 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 da. It's a city code. Wow. They pass, that's their that's code. That's pretty big. They have dress code. No in Victoria's their town. Secret in that town. No. No. Dress code in their wow. town. That's it. Wow. Anyway, the point is, there's a very, very substantial, fundamental difference between Islam and the Torah, between the Quran and the Torah. And that is, from its inception, all other religions, Christianity, Islam, all other religions believe that if it's good for me, it's good for you. As a matter of fact, this is the goodest thing to do, and everyone should be doing it. Right. There's no Jew, there's no person in the world, a Christian says, that wouldn't be better off believing in Jesus. Right. Yeah. There is no person in the world that wouldn't be better off believing in Islam. And once upon a time, when the Christians were a little bit higher up and... Uh, held more sway, like before the sex scandals. Right. Once upon a time, if you didn't believe in it, they yeah. would, you know, you, 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 put you on the rack you, until you did believe in it. Eventually you would and you'd okay. die. Right. And when Islam had the upper hand in the countries that they did, they did the same thing. They also, they also promoted their belief. And if you didn't want to do it, they would make an exception for you, but you had to accept it by yourself to live in, like in the Arab lands is Dimi, and the Dimi are like second-class citizens. Second 
Because you've know, got to be second class. You're not willing to accept the truth. You're obviously some type of second class person. But if you converted, that was fine. They wanted you to. Their, their yes. job is to go out and convert. Absolutely. And the government, of course, was conducted according to Sharia law, or Christian law, papal law, whatever it would be. Right, right. right? If you open up the Torah, there is a very important line that's repeated, I don't know how many times in the Torah, never made a count, but it's a ton. It has to be the most often repeated verse in the entire Torah. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the right. children of Israel and tell yeah. them, do X, right. do Y, don't do Z. It's almost in every other verse there. All over Exodus, the place. definitely. Speak unto the, the children of Israel. Never anywhere in the Torah does it say, people should, you all should. It's always, speak unto the children of Israel. Sometimes it even says, when you come into the land that the Lord your God is going to give you, do this or do that. And right. as a matter of fact, it's so specific. Torah law is so specific that it's to the Jews that even some great scholars like Nachmanides of the opinion that even Jews don't have to observe it outside of Israel. Wow. Okay. So certainly the Jews aren't going to go around trying to impose halacha, which means literally in Hebrew the way to go, you know, the path. They're not going to impose the path on non-Jews because there's even a question whether Jews themselves have to observe it when they're outside of Israel. But the problem with that is how is Judaism going to grow to be the biggest, most powerful religion in the world like Islam and Christianity if you can't convert? And the answer to that is ah, it's not. It's not. And guess what? Not supposed not to. Intended to. No. No. It's not intended right. to take over the world. You know, the, the airlines do not want everyone to become a pilot. True. Right? Uh, the airlines like, as a matter of fact, when most people don't know how to fly a plane because that way they buy tickets and they sit in right. the plane. And then right. all you have to do is hire one pilot and he'll fly. Maybe two. Three is already pushing it. Yep. Yep. Right? If everybody knew how to fly, it would be kind of tough there right. to have well, an airline. You get it. So you've right. got to have some people have a certain job. Right? You have a police force or you have a military or you have doctors. Everyone's not a doctor. People have roles. And people play their roles. The Jewish people have a role to play in the world. In order to fulfill their particular role, they need to follow a prescribed set of instructions. And that's why the Torah says, tell the children of Israel, do this, do that. And some say, as I said before, that they're not even supposed to follow them if they're not in Israel because they're not playing their role. If they're out of Israel, you know, this would be like a football player. Right. Okay? It's now March. Okay? So let's say, you know, you happen to bump into Matt Ryan right. like at the grocery store. Right. He's, he's there walking up down the aisle, Kroger, full pads, right. helmet, right. and everything on, right? <laughs> say, hey, Matt, like, I recognize you because, you know, like, you got your Oh, yeah. So he said, why are you wearing all the gear? He says, I'm a football player. So Matt right. is a grocery store. Yeah, you don't need it in the grocery store. You don't need store. it in the well, well some parts of Atlanta, but no. But, right, right. <laughs> you don't right. need that in here. You do need it when you get on the field because in order to do that, you're going to get killed if you don't put that on. Right. But you don't need, you're not, you're not a football player now. And that's what Nachmanides is saying, that the Jews. Oh, that's interesting. The Jews outside of Israel, they're off the field. You're not on the playing field. Israel is the playing field. And if you're outside of Israel. So then the question, just by the way, I know people are asking this question. I see it's coming in fast yeah, and furious. Everyone wants to know. So then how come everyone's observing all these laws outside of That's Israel? That's the question. Nachmanides actually says, and this is amazing, amazing answer. Nachmanides actually says that we were headed out into a long exile. And the rabbis determined if we didn't keep observing this stuff, 2,000 years might go by. By the time God comes to bring us back, and we're going like, what? Got a good point. We can't eat what? <laughs> we we got to put on what? But what are you talking about? It would be like the weirdest thing in the world. Yeah, that's a good point. Like Martians. Right. Right? No one would be able to relate to it. So we keep it up because we're planning all the time to be going back, and we need to keep our hand in it. We need to still keep putting on the tefillin. We need to still keep eating the kosher and so on and so forth. 
That's not fine. Not, not everyone agrees with him, but I'm just trying to illustrate that there is a valid opinion like that, which shows you how narrow our scope and understanding of what the purpose of the law is. So, so God came down, made this great law, the Torah, 613 commandments, and only intended it for one small minority of people in the whole world? Yeah. Wow. It's like, for example, you get on the player plane. The pilot may not have had liquor for the last 24 right. hours. But we can all drink. We're drinking on the plane. That's a yeah, good point. They're perfect. You know, you want to double, we don't take credit cards on the cash. We don't take cash on the credit whatever right. it is, right? You're drinking on the plane. And the poor and pilot he, can't drink at all. He's got a different set of rules, that's all. Wow. Now, what if they start to impose that on all the passengers? Because wow. you're flying on our planes, and we don't drink in the cockpit, you can't drink in the cabin. Well, it works with Sharia. Yeah, <laughs> they do say that. That's right. So you'd think they would, have, they would impose that table of it. It's not meant, the Torah was never meant to be observed by the world. There are certain fundamentals that we want to impose on the world. However, those fundamentals have to do with beliefs. Now, beliefs gets into a whole nother... So this is, so we have distinction number one. Distinction number one is most of halacha, I mean almost all of the details, all those 613 commandments with all the details and permutations and, and, right. and, and rabbinical rules, you can't eat, you can't drink milk if you had meat within six hours and all that stuff, right? That's all for Jews who have a particular role and they need to observe a particular set of laws. So we're not interested in that. But there are beliefs that we do believe should be universal. For example, we believe that everyone should believe that God made the world. God's a creator. Now, if they don't believe it, do we force them to believe it? Uh, so that's the problem is you can't force someone to believe something. That's true, too. Now, this would a lot be, of people have tried. This would be a really great surprise <laughs> to an awful lot right. of people. Spent a lot of time and money so and effort. Much time and money to try to force people to believe what they believe. Yep. You know, whether that be through crusades or, like, you know, uh, cutting their heads off. Or right. if it's, you know, the communists, like, killing, like, 12 million kulaks because they wouldn't believe. Or a good old-fashioned right. inquisition. Yeah, you name it, yeah. right? And right down to, like, you know, to parents who <laughs> all beat some sense right. into you, you know. <laughs> that doesn't work? <laughs> right. So guess yeah. what? It doesn't work. Oh. You can't force people to believe. Not only that, by the way, we have a rule that we are not allowed to proclaim. We are not allowed to proclaim government. This is a passage in the tractate Ketuvot in the Talmud. It says, when the Jews went into exile, they made three promises. And one of those promises, or three oaths to God, and one of those oaths is that we would not set up government outside of Israel. That means even if we went somewhere and the Jews are really in control, like Hollywood, right. you know, we got the money, we got the power, we might have the numbers and all, right. we would not impose government. Now, maybe internally for ourselves, but right. we would not impose government in the diaspora. Wow, that's kind of ruining our whole chance of taking over the world here. So we're forbidden, we made an oath. Wow. Not that we even want to, but the only reason we might want to is because we do believe, and it is one of our goals, to have the entire world believe that A, God created the world, and God created everyone that's in it, and that man's job is to worship Him. And, this comes along with that, is that we believe that the, um, that the world will come to recognize that the Jews are the uh, pace trendsetters and the ones that set the tone towards bringing the world to that belief. But even so, we don't look forward to forcing anyone to do that. Well, you say that then why in the seven Noahidic laws does it not talk about belief in God or does it talk about belief yeah. in God? Yes, it does. acceptance number one. Oh. I Number thought it was actually not killed. Was then why I can't get no, it? No, no, no. You're not supposed to kill. Right. Not supposed to steal. But you do have to believe in God. You have to set up a, a, a system of courts and right. justice, which, by the way, we don't determine. The, every country, we believe, if we would, if we would have the ability to, we would force every country to set up a justice system. Right. But it doesn't have to be according to the justice system of the Torah. 
It's just yes. everyone has to have a justice system that's recognized by their people, by their citizenry, as just. Follow whatever rules you want, monarch, no monarch, whatever it is, but you have to have a justice system. Interesting. But one of the seven is you've got to believe in God, the creator, and that everyone's existence is owing to him, and therefore God must be worshipped. Wow. Okay. Okay. Now, how are we going to bring that about then? If we can't force and we can't set up our own government, right? Got a lot of hands tied behind our back there. And everyone else is trying to figure out, like, you know, how to do it. Crusading yeah. away or, or jihading away or whatever. A couple right? bombs here and there. Right? Yeah, right. So how are you going to do it? So we believe, ultimately, that we're going to do it through example. Wow. We're going to set an example. And in two ways, we're going to set an example. Number one is... That's a lot of responsibility, by the way. I should know that right now. Yeah. I'm a little worried, but go ahead. Yeah. We're supposed to show the world that we're a shining example. Right. And by the way, by surviving. We've done all right there. Now, surviving is a really interesting thing because the truth is no one can figure out the Jews. Even the Jews can't figure out the Jews. No one really knows what we're doing here. Like, how come we're still around after all these years? And therefore... When people see, like in the Torah, the Torah promises Jews are always going to be around. By continuing to be around and be Jewish, we are actually the fulfillment of the prophecy of the Torah. So every right. day that we continue to be here and continue to be Jewish is one more day that we are making, validating the promises of the Torah. But ultimately, ultimately, we do believe that a Messiah is going to come. And what's he going to do? lead all the world, all the Jews, not the world, all the Jews back to Israel. He's going to set up a just, God-fearing country in Israel. We're going to worship God. The world's going to look at us and go, wow, those guys know what they're doing. And they're going to come, just like in the days of King Solomon, people are going to flow to Israel and say, give us direction, help us out. We got Hutus and Tutsis, right. and we got, you know, Protestants and Catholics, and, and we got conservatives and liberals right. and all the kind of stuff. So just by example, just by the example that we set, the whole world is finally going to get they're gonna on come, that path. And they're going to come to the king of the Jews and they're going to oh. say, help us out, give us some direction here. Wow. Like, what are we going to do? We got the sequester thing. Right. We don't know what to do. Like, right. Help us out. Like, where do we go from here? Right. Okay. Wow. The truth is, you know, like, and this is a classic example. No one knows where to go to from here. If they would, someone would have proposed it. Somebody be heading There's really way. no proposals on the table, right? Which means no one knows where to go. Interesting, interesting. So by example, it's just going to happen. We're not going to be. We're not going to be rounding them up. We're not going to be putting them in camps. Just by example. If you want to know the truth, they're going to round us up. What does that mean? Well, I've been there, done that. The, the, <laughs> the, yeah. So we've had roundups and we've yeah. had bad ones. It's so interesting too because since we have a history of having been rounded up for extermination. Right. The prophet talks about the fact, Zechariah talks about the fact, and Ezekiel also, that the nations of the world are going to take Jews, and one of them says they're going to grab the Jews by their tzitzis. That's how they can still know that they're Jews. And they're going to grab them and they're going to say, you got to go back to Israel. You know, even the Jews That's don't even want to go, they're going to force us to go back to Israel. Wow. Again, they are going to take us because they're going to say, hey, don't mess us up. If you stay here, Messiah's here, and you stay, you're messing up the whole world. You need to get back to Israel and start living wow. the Jewish life so that we can see the model. And not that that means we all need to be keeping kosher and all that stuff. We just need to get back to the Jewish so life. Bottom line, they're going to force us all back there. To start, they're going to force us to start being the models that we're supposed to be. Wow, that's interesting. I got a phone call one time from a lady. She just wanted to know some details about Jewish law. And I said, well, are you Jewish? And no, not Jewish. But we observe the Torah. So I said, why do you observe the Torah if you're not Jewish? I said, well, because it says so in the Torah. We believe in the Torah. Well, so I said, but it says to Jews. He said, well, we believe it's to everyone. Like, we're, we're the Jews, you know. Anyone calls himself a Jew. Right. So I said, do you have men in your group? So she said, yeah, we've got lots of men in the group. I said, and you don't mix milk and meat? No. The Torah said, don't mix milk and meat. I said, did men get circumcised? You know, I don't know. I said, well, you know, check that out and get back to me. Wait a minute, specifically check it out. Maybe you can call, ask. But yeah. 
don't know what right. you recommended. Because you know, like they're doing okay with the milk and meat, <laughs> but, but I don't see any of these adult males going to get circumcised. And that could probably be. Well, okay. Well, that's the question. Can non-Jews observe the Torah? Can they? Are they allowed to? No. Should they? No, they should not. They should not. They should not. Non-Jews should not observe the Torah. I mean, listen. You know, there's certain things. If you want to do it, you want to do it. But, you know, if I don't take a drink, 24 hours before I get on the plane, right? It's well nigh meaningless. Absolutely. But okay, no, but one but no one's going to tell you that you you're not allowed to be sober before you get right. on the airplane. The way we observe now, yeah, uh, no one's right. In temple times, actually, right. there's certain things that non-Jews were not allowed to eat, like offerings from the temple and stuff like that. Does that mean though there are 613, or not all of them, things that a non-Jew can't do? <laughs> I mean, beside the, the ones that are in the Noah as well. Yes, as a matter of fact, you know what? Non-Jews should not observe the Sabbath. The Sabbath is something, the way Jews observe it, is something that's a specific set of requirements for Jews. But you want them to... To rec um, observe their, the rights of their parents and to consider their parents, you don't care about that, or yeah. not steal. Well, not steal is one of the laws. You know the what? Laws. There's a lot of laws that Jews can, that, that non-Jews could and should observe, and many of the ethical laws. Right. And we even believe that even many of the uh, monetary, the business laws, because they're good and righteous to other people. Right. But as an act of devotion to God. Right. It would be the same as me not drinking before I get on a plane. It means zero. They don't ask me if I drink. They don't care if I drink. It means nothing. It mm. doesn't benefit anyone. It doesn't do anything for anyone. It's, it's, it's a meaningless act. Wow. Because that's, anyway, that's, that's where you make it. Obviously, Christians and, and, and Muslims as well do observe the, the first uh, right. books of the Torah. Right. But, so is it meaningless for them to even read that? I mean, I guess it leads to their next books and whatever, but is it mean, you know, they call it the Old Testament in Christianity. Right. So they should, if they want to understand what Jews are all about, and if it, if it leads them to a greater appreciation of God the Creator, that's good. That's good. But, you know, this, this basically, you know, I have to full disclosure. Like, I'm actually on retainer from the U.S. Uh, pork Growers right. Society. Right. right. right? Makes sense. So I am promoting non-Jews eat pork. Good for you. Good for you it's to healthy. Do. It's the other white meat. That's <laughs> right. I've heard that. It's healthy. So, so truthfully, it would be a great idea for you then to own a pork uh, a pork factory because you've been promoting it for these non Jews. Yeah, or actually, am I going too far there? The rabbis one? say <laughs> that Jews really shouldn't, shouldn't own do that. pork factories. Okay. But it's only like from their perspective. But non Jews eating pork, great. It's a great thing. Go for it. It's good. God made pigs. Someone should eat them. Wow. You know, God probably wants them so to eat. So you beep the horn every time you pass by the barbecue place, and you're cheering them on. That's right. Wow. Yeah, right. Wow, I like Barbecue that. Barbecue sauce, run right. down. Everything. Go for it. Wow, I just, see, I didn't, these are things I am glad. That's how I'm glad we have this show. I learned so many new things here. Nothing really... wrong with it. Cheeseburgers. Awesome. Perfect Great. thing. Go for it. So the bottom line is while the, the, the Muslims are out there, they're ready to convert with the sword or without the sword. They're ready to spread their religion. Right. Christianity, obviously, throughout the centuries has done the same thing. Wait. Want to leave us alone? That's right. We, we don't want you. We're not asking you to convert. But you will convert someone, but you're not asking. Right. I'm not asking. Now, if they ask, if someone comes along and says, I really, really feel that this is me, this is who I want to be, I want to serve God in this particular first thing I say to him, you can serve God and God can love you. You can be a great child of God without having to put on filling in the morning. Yeah, a lot easier. Right. And if the guy says, no, I feel that I want to take on that identity, well, listen, if a guy wants to become a pilot, you know, turn him down, right? But and God's okay with people converting into Judaism. Right, he can be a perfectly good person without being a pilot. Wow, that's interesting. So the rest of you out there in the world, you got nothing to fear. So stop, stop with all this worrying. That's right. Yes, we're going to make your movies and probably run your company. But other than that, don't worry about right. it. Now, we're we're not coming for you. There's really an entirely different discussion, which, you know, from perhaps for another episode, what would the Jews do in Israel if the religious Jews were in Israel and got in control? How would they that do that? And vis-a-vis -vis other Jews, not non-Jews, other Jews. What would be the attitude then? Would they impose on their co-religionists a Torah observance? Which I guess they'd have the right to do that, but then... well, You I can certainly they're... understand where, based on what we've been saying, they would feel motivated to do that. Right. Would they or wouldn't they? That's a topic for another discussion. Wow. Good discussion. All right. Well, yeah, I thought this is very interesting. Again, 
everybody else sleep easy. We're not coming for you. That's right. Don't worry about it. That's right. Now the Muslims are, but that's a different right. story. <laughs> watch that way. Watch <laughs> the East that way. Don't watch us. We're fine. That's right. All right. Great episode. Very educational. Okay. Uh, we'll see you next week on Jeff and the Rabbi.